Welcome back to the Immigration Answer Show. My name is Jim Hacking. This is episode number 388 of the show. Glad you all could join us. This will be our last show for two weeks. For two weeks, we won't have a scheduled show for the next two weeks. Now, I may do a pop-up show or two while I'm on the road. If you want to know when that happens, pay attention to the Facebook group, Immigrant Home. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel or text the word show to 314-470-3300. That way you'll get alerted at some point before I go live. So the waiting room is already full. I'm going to go ahead and start this party off and talk to Muhammad. Hello, Muhammad. Hey, how you doing, Jim? How's everything? It's good. How you doing? Good. Uh, you're hearing me well, right? Got you. Yeah. So this regards to my um, citizenship uh, case. I, um, the background, I got interview uh, in March 20, 20th. Yeah. And uh, after this, the uh, officer told me he cannot uh, make the decision and handle me this paper. Uh, today, I was checking by accident in the morning and I found like I chatted with you. I was saying like, uh, I was saying like uh, your uh, case been submitted for um, supervisory review. Qu quality review based on approval. Yeah. We recommended your case for approval, but it's submitted for quality review. And that's a standard process to make sure our decision is a quality of our decision. And then after this, I went to uh, log in online to my uh, my account and it say this and it say you place online for uh, you place on the line for the oath and then after this i got another message say your oath ceremony got canceled i didn't even get scheduled and then got canceled so i, I had an attorney and, and i checked with him he told me just maybe a scheduling problem was that oath but this means your case has been approved so i just I would, wanted to take I your would, opinion I don't, I don't agree with that so what do you think it is I think they're looking at your case. They're trying to decide what they want to do, and they haven't made a decision yet. Okay. All right. That's so, why. That's why. I, that's why I tell people don't be checking that portal every day. They they put the wrong things on there. They, I mean, just in twelve hours, you've had two different posts that are very different from each other. So, until you get the yeah. ceremony letter, everything else is just waiting. Yeah, he told me. We get this all the time. Like we get the old ceremony and then get canceled right away because it's a busy place. So that's what he told me. So I'm not well, sure I exactly. Think, I don't think I don't think it's because it's a busy place. I think it's because they're trying to decide what to do on your case. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I, 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 the only thing I have that I was in removal and I got my green card by the judge. That's yeah. why it took me a while after the interview. But after this, I got married and I'm still with my wife. And it was a smooth interview. I had no problems, you know, like, I don't know. So inshallah, it'll be quick. A couple, a couple weeks, maybe yeah okay and like no, no suggestion right you think that they still didn't make the decision yet right you're just waiting yeah okay and i have a month still 120 days like in case of nothing happened within a month what should i do like contact you and sure. try to sue them yeah sure okay yeah. all right but nothing to worry about it in the meantime right like nothing, nothing to worry to about it. okay all right thank you jim Thanks, Appreciate see you buddy bye-bye bye-bye all right. Shubman is here. Hello, Shubman. Hey, hi, Jim. How are you? Great. How are you doing? Good. Uh, hi, I'll keep question, Jim. Hello? Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. So I'm on H1B right now. Hello? Go ahead. I'm here. Yeah. yeah I, hi, Jim. So I'm on my H1B. So I am filing my extension. At the same time, like... Uh, can we do other uh, like uh, this one uh, perm status uh, perm status i140 also in the parallel like while my h1 like uh, is going in parallel also sure also yeah uh, can i ask one more question instead of my friend of course the same yeah he's also started uh, his h1b but uh, you would like to change uh, adjustment of status to uh, family based so is it the right time to do or uh, do you want uh, like uh, once i get the uh, h1b extension to be approved or uh, can i do parallel two of them this is somebody else or this is the same person 
No, so, uh, this is uh, another person. So ask me the same so question. Somebody has a pen. Somebody is going through the H-1B process, but they're also, yeah. what, are they married to a U.S. citizen or a green card? Yes, holder? yeah, he married. And, uh, yeah, he's married to a U.S. citizen. And uh, he's just, uh, he's parallel, doing the two things. Like, he's wanted to, to try I-140 and uh, wanted to, like, with uh, family-based also, two green cards. Can I do like that? Or? Yes. Oh, totally okay, fine. So, totally fine. So, yeah, because there's uh, two green cards, right? Basically, one with employer, one with, uh, like, well, they will not say anything, said, right? You said H-1B, and you said he's going through the H-1B process, and he wants to get a green card. H-1B, are you saying he wants to do an employment green card and a family-based exactly. green card? Well, yeah, then, we want- then I, if I were him, mm-hmm. had he has he already started the employment part? Yeah, perm is completed, so oh. he wanted to start with I-140, right, after perm, so he, he's asking. He can, it's sort of overkill, it's a waste of money, if the marriage is legit, it's sort of dumb. Okay. What, so, I, would do, what I would do, and what I've done before, or had done before, mm-hmm. is have the employer, talk to the employer and say, look, you're going to spend a ton of money trying to get my I-140 approved, why don't you just help me get my green card through marriage, and then we'll call it a day. with family he want he said uh, he go, i gonna do for only for uh, like employment i am not responsible for your uh, this one the... can you hear me yeah hello yeah i can hear you jim yeah. so i was saying you might talk to the employer and say hey would you be willing to spend some of the money that you would have spent on my employment-based green card would you spend that towards towards a marriage-based green card and see what they say yeah, he asked already. So you don't want to do applications, one with employment, one with uh, this one. The... It's totally okay to do it. It's just a waste of money. Oh, okay. He said, uh, no, I am not uh, going to sponsor because I am the employer. I'm going to do only for employment-based green card. I cannot uh, give with family-based. So that's, he's that's talking dumb. with family. That's dumb, but I understand. Yeah. So. Thanks, so... Shaban. Yeah, last question, Jim. So, is it you guys can help with, uh, like, with the family based or this one? Sure. So, sure, we do that all the time. Yeah, how much processing time it will take with family based? So, approximate uh, time. It de- it depends. It depends. Okay. Um, it could be anywhere from four months to a year and four months. No, oh, four months to okay. Info hacking law e- email ID we should contact right if needed. Yeah, info at hacking immigration law dot com. Yep, info okay. at hacking immigration law dot com. Yeah. Okay, Jim. So we'll talk to him and I'll share the information. Okay. Thanks so thanks, much. Jim. Yeah, Have thanks. a good day. You too. Raj is next. Hello, Raj. Hello, Jim. How are you? Great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I have a couple of questions, but it's a really quick question. Um, I was a J-1 scholar like a decade ago, um, but I completed my two years home residency requirement. Uh, now I have my I-140 NIW approved. Um, I was just wondering how should I show that I completed my two year home residency requirement back in my home country? What proof do you have that you've been living in your home country? Um, so, you know, I have like uh, the old uh, plane ticket that going back to uh, to my home country. And I have a couple of emails from the Fulbright Commission saying that when I wel- welcome home, um, things like that. Um, did you did you get a job once you came back? Uh, so when 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 in Nepal, I, I stayed with my with my parents. Uh, you know, I was I was very young at that point. Um, sure. So I did not have any job per se, but. I took some classes, um, and I think like my professor are willing to write affidavit. Um, yeah, and I think you should write an affidavit. I think you you can walk them through. I came back to my country on this day. I moved in with my parents at this address. I lived at that address for seven years, or two years, or three years, or six years, whatever it is, and then just walk them through your history. You know, just a nice long detailed affidavit with a couple of exhibits, like the plane ticket, like you know, the school records, whatever, and just nail that down shouldn't be a problem. Visa right now, but during my F1 visa, I also got... Um, Sorry, are you going to consular process on the I-140 or are you going to adjust status? Uh, I'm going to do adjust status. I'm in the U.S. right now in F1 visa. Good. So that'll be easier. That'll be easier. They'll, they'll, 
you won't need a lot of evidence for it. I mean, you know, give them as much as you can get, but um, I think but an, affidavit, an affidavit from you with some exhibits should carry the day. Yeah, but that, like, I, I also have a TPS at the moment, um, but the problem... The squirrels are at it today, man. The squirrels are at it today, and he is not in the waiting room anymore. I don't know what's going on. Haytham's here. Hello, Haytham. I can't hear you. It's those heads. Oh, nope. Still can't hear you. Hello? There we go. Hey, how are you doing, Mr. Jim? I'm, I'm great, Mr. Haytham. How are you doing? I'm all right. So I have a question, Mr. Jim. Um, I applied for my wife. My wife is from Jordan. Uh, we got married last July. So um, I've been watching um, my so, father. Sorry, the, the last thing I heard is we got married last July. That's the last thing yes. I heard. Yeah, then I, then I filed for I-130 on uh, September. So um, I was watching watching my case just to the processing time and stuff. So the thing is, um, it's been like, okay, nine months, then seven months, and six months. When I, I, I did hit like the four, four months after that, um, there's no longer have a processing time on my case. So when I... Uh, but I just log in my profile and it was going to show me uh, your case is taking uh, longer than expected. You don't have to do anything. That's the only thing. So, so, what, so yeah. I, what, what's the actual filing date of the I-130? Uh, uh, September 26. Of 22? Yes. Okay. So what's the question? So um, like, what's the reason? Like there's um, like, there's no processing time showing on my case. Uh, like at this because, moment. because they're trying, they're, they're tired of people complaining about their cases taking so long. So they're hiding the information about how long they're taking and they're trying to discourage you from bothering them. That's why, because they're lazy and they don't do their job. Well, I mean, uh, like, is like, is there any way like I can just submit an inquiry and say, Hey, what's going on with my case? Sure. I'm a citizen, by the way. Yeah, you can submit an inquiry. It's not gonna they're not gonna tell you anything, but you can, sure. I mean, um, it's like is it like a sign saying, Hey, like your mm. case is it's not no. doesn't mean like something. No, I, I, I've been telling everybody I wouldn't worry until a year's gone by. Right. Well, yeah, I'm waiting up to actually just to hit a year, then after that, um probably I have to do something about it. Sure. Well, I, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your videos. Uh, I've been watching you for probably like last year and a half. So I appreciate your for your videos. I well, appreciate it. Good luck. Keep us posted. Hopefully, I, hopefully, hopefully she'll get her I-130 approved soon and you can go on to the National Visa Center. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank Bye, you. Hatham. See you, Thank buddy. You. Felicia's here. Hello, Felicia. Hi. Thanks for having me. Sure. How you doing? I'm, I'm good. How are you? Great. Good. I have a question. Well, actually, let me tell you what's going on. My husband had his interview back in February the 14th uh, of this year. After a week, his interview, uh, he received an email saying that he has to file form DS5535. So we didn't hear from them. We're still waiting. We have been waiting for you. What do you think? we should do next sorry felicia when did when did when did they when did you submit the 5535 uh back in august the 7th just what embassy three months uh casa blanca ah <laughs> my old favorite yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um august is ridiculous that's ridiculous so uh besides the 5535 how did the interview go it went well. He passed everything, his exam and everything. We just had to show uh, she wanted some a, a little bit more proof pictures uh, from 2019. And we we gave it to them. And now we're still waiting. There's no, they didn't uh, answer us or anything. We're just still waiting. We don't know. If you If you had to guess, why are they sitting on the case? Age gap. Tell me it's about that. It's a big age gap. How much? It's 25 years. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Were they mean to him in his interview? No. No. Hmm. Well, 
this might be a lawsuit case. I haven't sued boy, I haven't sued Casablanca in a while. We used to sue them all the time. Mm. Um, but we haven't sued they've they've been better, they've been better, but um yeah, 25 year age gap, that's gonna get their attention. So yeah. Um, I suspect if we sue him, they're going to bring him in for another interview and yell at him in Arabic and accuse him of all these bad things. Yeah. But I, otherwise, I think you're just going to wait if you don't sue them. Uh, I think we should sue. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, um, can you send me an email with the the paperwork? I mean, that 5535, that, that's just a delay tactic. That's all that is. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, you know, we've won cases... I think our biggest age gap is 39 years, um, but that was here in the States. It's a little easier when you're in the States. Yeah. Um, yeah. It sounds like you've been together for a long time if you knew each other in 2019, though. Uh, yes. Um, two, 2019, yeah. And then I married him on the first try, the first one I went out there. Well, that's that never that's never good. That's always That always makes it harder. They don't like that. Yeah. But we have a strong relationship. I'm uh, I've been here for uh, four years. Four. I mean, I'm sorry, four times. Yeah, yeah, four times. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, send us an email and we can go from there. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Jim. Okay. Bye, Felicia. Okay. Bye, bye. You know, I was just waiting to say bye, Felicia, from that movie. Friday. Elmi, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, Jim? Good, buddy. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. Uh, so I, I got a, I got a problem going on. Uh, so my wife's uh, visa case, uh, I, I applied for her uh, I one thirty back in April twenty twenty one, and April of tw April of twenty April of twenty one. Yeah, April of twenty one. It got okay. uh, uh, approved and sent over to NBC and. It got DQ'd over in August 11th of 2022. Uh, yeah. We have a daughter together, and uh, she, my daughter's a U.S. citizen. And she ended up uh, getting real sick last year. So I ended up mm -hmm. uh, getting an expedited case. Uh, they did she, not both. She, she, she your daughter or she your spouse? My daughter. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up... Uh, uh, getting the expedited cases and they refused the case uh, the uh they didn't give me a reason they just they refused the expedite request or they refused the the visa they refused the expedite request okay what embassy uh, the embassy did yes i did it twice. what which embassy nairobi nairobi okay yeah uh, i even uh sent a letter to my congressman still didn't work um yeah so she's not so she's not had an interview she has not had an interview yet, and it's okay. we've been August eleventh of twenty twenty two. Yeah. yeah. Um, so n now I'm, I'm I'm thinking about the next steps, uh, and I I'm wondering if I should wait for that twelve month mark. Yeah. Let me ask you this: um, What uh, when you get on the chat boards and hear about other people having cases in Kenya? What what are you hearing as far as what cases they're processing? Are they doing cases that are newer than yours or older than yours or what are you hearing from what i'm hearing and i've been everywhere all over the internet right, i'm sure and, uh from what i'm hearing they, they haven't been doing any cases uh they haven't done any cases from i want to say february of 2022 even may of 2022 uh people are still waiting so um, fair, so fair to say there's a lot of people ahead of you in line uh there's quite a bit of people but i'm, I'm just a little uh um worried because of the fact that you know my, my daughter is over there and I'm, I'm trying to bring her back stateside with her mom well those assholes would say she can come whenever she wants yeah that's the that's the sucky thing now i mean your case your wife's case is the one kind of case where they're we're seeing motions to dismiss more than any other it's not to say the lawsuit might work mm -hmm. but the one the one case where we're seeing more motions to dismiss than others is when it's an overseas case. There has not been an interview. And we know pretty well that there's people with earlier priority dates that also haven't had an interview. Those are the ones where they come back and say, Judge, we'd really like to help Elmi and his wife, but we've got all these other people in line ahead of us. The lawsuits work when someone's had their interview, when there's some bullshit reason why they're sitting on the case. Um, so when it, I guess stated another way, when it's just, when it's just, 
everyone's been delayed. That those are the ones where we see them file motions to dismiss. Okay. So, what's your uh, opinion on it? Should I just continue? I think waiting? I'd, I think I'd wait till the end of the year and see what happens. Not that that's what you want to hear. The end of the year seems like a long time away, but mm -hmm. I think that's probably a good time to revisit revisit it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Jim, for all your work. Our Bye, Elmi. See you, buddy. See ya. All right. Now, I don't know what this is all about, but somebody who calls himself Chicago fans wants to come. What is I don't know. What, I don't know what's going on. How are we doing, Jim? It's there's like, you. I'm sorry. There's like, there's like no Chicago <laughs> sports teams I like. So anyway, how you how doing? Are you, how are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, good. A long time watcher. Uh, second time caller. Awesome. Uh, I, I got a couple of questions on behalf of my friend and myself as well. Sure. Great. Starting with my friend, uh, he's trying to uh, apply for his citizenship. His last uh, trip was a 15 days vacation, not to his home country. It was in November last year. That's okay. like seven, seven months ago. Is that okay to apply now? 15 days? Uh, 15 days only, and it's not to his home country. Well, you're saying not his home country, why he got asylum or something? Oh, no, no. I mean, uh, well, he's a refugee. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Fifteen. So 15 days is not a big deal. No, that's fine. The The question is, yeah. has he been in the United States for more than half the time in the last five years? And has what? he not had any trips more than six months? Those are the two big questions. No, he has been here uh, since uh, 2016. Yeah, should be fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the first question. The second question, uh, he was asking, how much would cost if you hire you guys just to do his uh, filing for naturalization? For, yeah. So, oh boy, I don't know. I got to look up the chart. Just give me a second. I should know oh. these. Um, I'll, let's just say it's somewhere between four and five thousand. I'm not sure exactly. It's somewhere between four and five. Four and five. Okay, now uh, my questions. Sure. Uh, how long is it going to take if I want to withdraw my N-400? Withdraw it? Yes. So I mean, until um, until I send a, uh, a mail and then I get the response. How long well, is it going to take? Well, that's the thing is you don't always get a response, right? So there's I no... See. It's not like it's not like a regular filing where you you're expected to get a receipt. I mean, usually, right. usually you get an, a reply that they've closed out the case. I mean, you know, they're trying right now with Biden, they're trying to close out every case they can. So they're sort of happy to get those letters. Now, if they're if they're an inch from denying you, they might not even let you withdraw it. And they might just um, they might just go ahead and deny it anyway. So um, it depends how far in the process you are. It depends how busy they are. It depends how close your case is to interview. So, and, and like I said, you might not get a response at all. I see. I haven't had an in interview yet and I've been uh, waiting for like uh, almost two years. Do you want to talk I, about, do you want to talk about why you're withdrawing it or do you, do you not want to talk about that? Um, no, it's fine. I mean, uh, I did a couple mistakes. Mm. Since you filed, uh, I was you, yes, I was filed. I I was waiting for their interview just to correct it, but I mean it's nothing now. Uh, oh, you mean I, you mean you made a couple of mistakes on the form, or you got in like criminal on the form. trouble? Yes, on the form. Well, can't you fix it? Uh, how like with the interview? Yeah, at the interview. Like, can you give me an example of a mistake you made? Uh, I forgot to list one of the jobs. Oh, that's no big deal. And uh, I got a couple dates, uh, not the right date. No, no, no. So the purpose, not, not the right dates, like what, about work or where you're living or some bullshit like that? Uh, trips and a uh, couple hiring dates. Dude, nobody cares. That's the whole purpose of the interview is to go over it and say, hey, Chicago fans, do you have any corrections to the form? That's That's the purpose of the interview, other than giving you the test. Um, that, that's certainly no reason to withdraw the case, especially if you've been waiting for two years. Yeah, the, well, this is the other thing. I mean, it's been waiting for two years and nothing so far. Well, did you, uh, or were you a refugee too? Yes. Yeah, so I think they take a really long time on asylum and refugee citizenship because mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes those people got their green cards without an interview, which means citizenship is the first and the last time they've gotten to talk to you since you got asylum. True. 
or refugee status. And so that's not unusual. Those are ones where we have to file a lawsuit. But, you know, dinky mistakes like about dates and stuff, especially, I mean, as long as it's not something like, like, as long as it's not like I got divorced on this day, but I didn't really like those are bigger things. But just like when you moved and all that stuff, nobody cares. It's just a matter of cleaning it up at your interview. Like in the old days, the officer would have a red pen or a purple pen and they would circle like people would make like four, they'd make 14 corrections and nobody cares. It's, it's just part of the, part of the deal. Even if I missed to list one of the jobs on, it's not a big deal for them. As long as the job wasn't selling drugs or Chicago Cubs merchandise, <laughs> you'll be fine. No, not really. Almost close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, as long as it's nothing, I mean, no, that that's exactly what the interview's for is just fixing that stuff. Like sometimes people have a gap and now the computer won't even let you have a gap. So they're, they're totally used to that. And as long as they don't think you were being sneaky or lying about something, then it's totally not a big deal. I see. Uh, what do you suggest uh, after the two years? I mean, I'm almost head into the two years. So which field? Oh, would this be in Chicago? Chicago, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great place to sue. Chicago is a great place to sue. They don't mess around at all. It's my favorite place to sue. There's a great paralegal in Chicago at the U.S. Attorney's Office, and she just, as soon as you sue them, she calls up USCIS and everything gets moving. So two years is plenty long, plenty long. I, I think I think you should think about suing them whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, I did watch some uh, videos. Actually, I watched all the, your videos. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you still with the, what you call it, the program you pay. Uh, like the payment plan? Three, yeah. Yeah. Three. Uh, it's three thirty-two hundred to start, and then five hundred a month for four months, plus the four hundred. The thirty-two hundred includes the four hundred two dollar filing fee. So it's thirty-two hundred. So, so yes. Yeah. So I'll just walk you through it. It's forty-eight hundred dollars plus a four hundred two dollar filing fee. So it's five thousand two hundred and two dollars. So most people pay thirty thirty-two oh two three thousand two hundred and two, and then five hundred a month for four months. But if you pay it all up front, then it's it's forty seven hundred and two dollars instead of fifty two or two. You say five hundred bucks. You said four seven hundred, right? And two, yeah. And two. I always got to get that two dollars. Somebody got really mad at me about the two dollars. I should probably, um, I should probably change that. But it's it's just it's just I don't know the two dollars that the court raised the two dollars a while back, and it's just easier from an accounting standpoint to keep it separate. I see. I see. Uh, all right. Do you know how long it's going to take if we sue them? Probably about two or three months. To get the interview? To get the interview, yeah. Okay. All right, Jim. I appreciate you. Thank you. Cool, and we're going to miss day. you. You said two two weeks? Two weeks. I'm off for we're two gonna weeks. We're going to miss you, man. Yeah, I'll be, I, might, I might show up. I, I mean, you know, everyone at my house gets up really late. So if I'm six or seven hours ahead and I'm up early, so that would – if. Oh, no, then it'd be the middle of the night. So that's not going to work. So we'll see. I might do a show. I might not. We'll just see. But I'm traveling. So we'll. I'll probably find a time or two to do something. I see, man. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thanks, man. See you, bud. Bye. What a nice call that was. Let's head to Luis. Hello, Luis. You're on mute. Oh, uh, can you hear me okay now? Got you. All right, sir. Well, thanks for everything that you do. Sure. Uh, I'm... Uh, I'm very blessed to uh, be being able to find you here sure. on YouTube. Uh, What's going well, on? You, uh, you seem stressed out. What's wrong? Uh, well, I, my brother, well, I'm, I kind of came from a family of eight children. Yeah. Uh, one of my brother lives in uh, my brother's lives in Mexico. He had a, a, a you know a small retail store. Uh, two days ago, the. Uh, cartel guys came and pick up his family um they asked for a um, uh, 1.5 million pesos which is the equal amount of uh, about eighty four thousand dollars us dollars um anyway he was able to find someone to loan him the money and pay the ransom money and they you know they let him go uh thank god um but he keeps getting text messages from them and he keeps on being followed, being followed by these uh, people. Uh, and uh, I was just uh, trying to see if, if does, you think he has a chance to be able to apply for asylum with him and his family. 
I mean, is I'm sorry that this happened to his family. I'm I'm worried about him and his family. Is I assume he didn't involve the police or anything, right? Uh well, some neighbor of the you know the place where he has his uh, retail store was the one to call the police, and uh, uh, you know they showed up. But uh, as usual, they're incompetent. They don't do anything. Uh, you know, it's just a well, they, normal thing in Mexico. They probably got some of the pesos back. Yeah, yeah, they probably did get uh, some of that money because that's quite a bit of money. I mean, and it's going take him a lifetime to get that paid off of course uh the you know the uh, uh, there's four of us here yeah four of his brothers two sisters and two brothers we're definitely gonna help as much as we can but uh i mean i was just uh if he has a shot of applying for asylum uh what what will he need it's, as far as you know showing as proof uh, well, that's what order. I mean. So, so there's probably not a police report. His testimony alone can be proof. Um, they're going to be suspicious and they're going to, I mean, but if he and his family came, you know, obviously I can't tell anyone to sneak into the United States, but if they came to the port of entry or if they came and applied for asylum, do I think it's a strong case? I think, uh, I think maybe it is. I think that the immigration courts and the asylum offices are very suspicious. I mean, it sounds like a, a good claim to me, but I'm a nice person who cares about people. Right. And they're, they're not so nice. So, um, I mean, I certainly think, you know, the, you know, the, the sad thing is just for everybody watching, if Luis wanted to sponsor his brother, the wait time right now for Mexico is 22 years, 22 yeah. years. Well, I, I'm brother. actually, I got another question on that. Uh, yeah. I, that my, my son, uh, uh, which he just turned 22, uh this uh december he applied for me you know he applied for i-130 on 2021 yeah and uh i did um i did get my work permit uh the 28th of this year um and then i did get a, a letter on the 6th of january about uh, my interview which i went to on february um and uh the 15th that was the, the interview date and uh ever since that i i still you know i keep looking on my uscis app and uh it keeps showing like uh it says that the interview was settled but there's no changes or so anything on it are you 245i uh do you know what that means no sir did somebody apply for a green card for you back in the late 90s no, no, they, they didn't, uh, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, I came with a work visa though. Oh, okay. So, okay. So that's good. So you don't need a waiver yeah. or anything. Okay. So you just, you're no. just a long, you're just a long time visa overstay. And so you had your interview, what, which field office had your interview? Uh, the it's here in Nashville, Tennessee, oh, which I was just, we were here I was just about two days yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how did the interview go? Did they give you any trouble? Well, it was a long interview. Um, uh, back you know about 21 years ago or uh, 22 years i'm actually i uh, was trying to get back uh with my family so <laughs> they got got caught uh they put me on removal proceedings i applied for uh you know uh i did uh, ask to see a judge the judge gave me a um uh he told me that that i what's it called uh, uh voluntary deportation and he told me at the at the court hearing that uh, I was welcome, uh, but you know I, I was always welcome back to the U.S. as long as I did it properly, which I did. After I left, I got the visa, but they were like they were like a little suspicious of, of how I got back in so quick. And, Wait, so uh, so 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 you you were in the United States. You got uh -huh. caught. You got caught. You got given voluntary departure. Then you uh -huh. went back back to Mexico, and then you got a work visa to come back. Yes. And then, and then you've been here ever since. Yes, sir. Got it. Yeah, that would confuse them, and especially no offense, especially in Nashville, they're not used to a lot of Luis Garcias who had a voluntary departure and then reentered. That's that's sort of a head scratcher. Now, I hope Luis that you did this with a lawyer, right? Yes. Yes. He he has. Uh, 
for my understanding that uh, he has sent a letter uh, a day a day ago or two two days ago. I don't know, uh, and uh, I haven't heard from him or had. Well, but, uh, but he but he feels like you're on solid ground that the voluntary departure doesn't. Like, like yeah. if, if I were your lawyer, we would have given them a whole brief and walked them through exactly why you're eligible in 2023 to get your citizenship. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, your green card, yeah. your green card. Yeah, the green card. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, I just, I'm just, uh, all this thing has me so stressed out and I'm sure. my I father's can, problem. And, I can hear yeah. it in your voice. Yeah, well, it's not it's not been fun. The last two days, two nights, no yeah. sleep or anything. <laughs> Hopefully that they leave my brother alone down there. But uh, yeah, I mean, so you think he's eligible to apply for asylum? Well, anyone that gets to the border or across the border can apply for asylum. Um, I think the case probably would need to be worked up, but I think he certainly has a believable claim, a credible fear and can at least get it all started what's going to happen on the back end i don't know it depends probably which asylum officer or which judge he gets yeah yeah and if, if uh, I'm, but it's, I'm a, sure. it's a it's a it's a it's a real case yes it is i mean yeah i mean we we hear these things going all over, all around us but i never thought that would hit us um yeah and then um, and sure, sure enough it did and i'm just you know i'm just trying to find the different options we got and you think uh is is there something you guys can help us with to try to well, you know like for his case probably yes. not i mean pro okay. it's probably going to be it's probably going to be in deportation court if he makes it to the united states just email me and i'll, I'll help you find someone to help him um, okay well thank you on, yeah. on your case so when did you um when did you get the order of voluntary departure and then and then um when did you, when did you leave and how soon did you come back on the visa uh the ball the, the voluntary departure was uh done on two uh 2002 and uh, i did came, uh came back about uh, two, uh, the, the, the middle of 2003 on an h2a or something yeah h2a visa yes yeah. sir yeah okay well that's an interesting case i'll be glad i'll be interested to see how that all plays out i'll be interested to see if that's going to work i i hope it does i'm just not sure well, I will definitely uh, get him, you know, get back with you and uh, let you know what's, you know, how how it goes, and uh, hopefully everything works out for for me Hang and in my there, brother. Buddy. Yeah, for well, sure. Thank Thanks, Luis. All right, bye -bye. what's your brother's name? I'll say a prayer for uh, him. Uh, uh, Jesus. Jesus. Got yeah. it. Jesus. Thanks, Luis. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, the man. Thanks, Luis. See you, buddy. Thank you, sir. I appreciate everything. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yep, for sure. What a nice guy. Raj is back. Hello, Raj. Hello, Jim. Sorry, I I think I lost my uh, internet connection previously. Nope. No problem. So we we're talking about the J one. You got. We talked about how to nail down your story. I mean, I think I think you've got enough to the, with a long statement from you, sworn with an affidavit with a notary, and a couple of exhibits. I think you're good on that one. Yeah, I have one more question. So sure, I'm in an F one status, and I also have a TPS. Um, and by, but my final action date is not current, and it looks like I will be graduating before the final action date is current. Um, will I be able to adjust my status if I get out of F1 visa and rely on the TPS? No. No, you'd have to. You'd have to. Um continue on in school to maintain your f1 so for purposes of adjustment at least at least until at least until you can file the 45 mm -hmm. but but better all the way through i see yeah i i may be able to extend my my phd uh, but i i somehow thought like tps is itself i i status and i have just double protection uh and if i lose one i i may be able oh. to TPS is not status for purposes of adjustment. I, I'm 99% sure. And even if it were, I would tell you to do both. Sure, sure. Okay, that, that's all my question. Thank you so much, Jim. Bye, Raj. See you, buddy. Good okay. luck. Yeah, for sure. John's here. Hi, John. Hi, Jim. <laughs> Thanks for answering my call. Um, so just to explain a bit about my situation, I'm a 44-year-old Canadian, and my fiancé is a U.S. citizen. Um, I was born in South Korea, but I've been Canadian for 40 years. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, we're we're getting married in January. Um, but there's an age gap. I'm 20 years older than her. Um, she initially came here to Canada to join me. And she got her uh, permit. So, so she, she's a U.S. citizen? <laughs> U.S. citizen, born in, in the U.S. Uh, she moved here about a year and a half ago, and she got her permanent residency in Canada. But we have decided to move to back to the United States. Uh, do you advise waiting in Canada, initiating the process here in Canada, um, you know, consular processing, all that, and then moving together to the United States or me, you know, going with her, you know, on like a TN visa or something like that, some other process to be within the United States sooner and then adjust status and all that. So first of all, yeah. age, gap, age gaps don't matter much when the U.S. citizen is the younger one. So, okay. so, that, so okay. that part we're good. Um, okay. Thank you. Especially, it seems like you have a long history together. So I think we're Yes, fine. we've been yeah. together since 2019. Yeah. So, um, uh, well, let me, let me just lay it out for you, the different approaches that are there. So you're, okay. you're already married, right? Yeah. Uh, no, we're not married. We're engaged, but we will okay. be married in January 2024. Okay, get married in January. Okay, so, yeah. so, so there's a couple of different routes. You could, mm -hmm. she could file a fiance petition for you, but I hate fiance petitions right now. I've been, <laughs> I'm down on them. I just talked to someone yesterday who got screwed yeah. over the, their fiance case on this show. She's been waiting two years and it got yeah. approved and then the embassy screwed around. So, and there's so then all the kinds of TV shows about it now. So, yeah. well, that, <laughs> I believe it or not, I had someone, I did a consult yesterday and they yeah. want him to, they want him to come on 90 day fiance. And I said, I said, oh, right? uh, you can go ahead and do that, but I'm not going to be your lawyer. So, yeah. um, all <laughs> you right. don't want so, that kind of publicity. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like publicity, but they just make the people look out to be so dumb and, and, mm. and you know, and they, yeah. and they say, dumb. we're big fans of the show, by the way. So yeah. Of that show or this show? That show, your show yeah. too. <laughs> oh no, I'm a big fan of that show too, but for the train wreck effect, not for <laughs> yeah. the, not yeah. for the people acting uh, intelligently or doing things that their lawyer would want them to do. Oh, yeah. But any yeah. event, any yes. event. Mm -hmm. So there's two approaches. Okay. Mm -hmm. Approach number one is she comes, she's in, she's with you up there in January and you get married. Yeah. She files an I-130 petition for you using some American address, her last known American address or her future American address. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So one thing is going to be, where does she reside and does she have domicile? We're going to, if she hasn't been in America for a while, we're, at some point we're going to have to reestablish domicile for her in the state. She still has her Indiana driver's license and all that stuff. Yeah. So we use all that. We get everything yeah. pointed to Indiana. So mm -hmm. that's going to take seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months to get approved. Okay. And then you're going to go to the national visa center. Yeah. And then unless you're unless you're in the western part of Canada, you're going to go to Montreal, right? I'm in the eastern part, so yeah. Yeah, so you're going to go to Montreal mm -hmm. and they're slow as shit, right? So you're mm -hmm. you're probably talking 18 to 24 months start to finish. Okay, okay. Now, if you you cannot come to the United States with the of on a TN or on a B1 or a Canadian border card or anything, you can't come with the intent Yes. To, to file for a green card. That's right. But that's right. Mm -hmm. I, I would imagine that if you've been in relationship with her since 2019, you've had some visits to the United States. Many visits. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if on if on a visit you were here in the United States and then and then all of a sudden either that's when you got married or, you know, after you if you, you know, I would if you if you waited 90 days to get married and then got married and then applied for adjustment, that'd be one thing. Yeah. Um, and, but you can't have that intent when you go through customs, it would have to be something okay. that developed while you were here, but so if you Jim, did all, yeah. Mm -hmm. What if we were already married and then visited into the United States? Well, sometimes, the, not... sometimes the customs official will give you grief about that. Okay. Um, but usually like the first or second time after you get married, they'll say, if you want to keep coming, you better file for a green card. So, mm -hmm. you know, so if you were married and, and let's, if you, if someone, some hypothetical John got yeah. married in January and then came to visit the United States, say in April. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, you know, 90 days after arrival applied for a green card yeah. that John, John would be stuck here without work authorization or a travel document for seven, eight months, but they could yeah. do the whole process here in the United States. Okay. Rather than two years from abroad. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. That, yeah. See, that's the thing. It's, it's trying to find the optimal, a choice that allows for us to be be together and for me to and be and to be able working to work. right yeah. yep. and i don't no, think I there's know. any like best choices here so well i mean if if yeah. 
if mm. you guys get married in January and she's uh-huh. staying up in Canada and you guys are happy in Canada for 18 yeah. months, then you, yeah. can just do, you can just do the I-130. You can work up until the day you leave. Right. And then, and then you pay your Ellis fee and the green card follows you. And then okay. you, you pick right back up in the States. Right. Not a bad, you're, you're not, okay. it's not like, it's not like you're in, you know, mm-hmm. some place you don't want to be Canada. Right. You're, right. Both, you both have status there. You're enjoying Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you know if the Western Canada office is faster than Montreal? Yeah. Okay. Would that be Calgary, Vancouver? Vancouver. Vancouver. Okay. Like a lot significantly faster. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Like is I'd say, any... I'd say 40 to 50% faster. Is there any way to reroute a uh, potential Not application? It all depends on where you live. Okay. I see. Okay. All right. All right. Good to know. Yeah. So Thanks, this is John. exactly what I wanted. Thank you for this advice. You got it, buddy. We'll see you. All right. Thanks, Jim. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Whenever I talk to people that are employed, married or engaged, and trying to figure out how to come to the United States, there's always this these competing interests. And I always tell people, you know, it's sort of like at a restaurant, you can pick two of these things, but you can't pick three. Like you got to figure out what's your priority. What's number one. What's the the most important thing is to be together. The most important thing is to be able to work every day up until I come. And then as soon as I can, after I come, you know, I want to be a productive member of society. I don't want to just be sitting on the shelf waiting for my damn work card. There's a lot, or we want to be together. um, Or we got a sweet gig in Canada and, and we'll just come when we come, you know, people every situation is different so it's always fun to have those conversations let's say hi to junior what up junior you're on mute hey jam can you hear me i got you now junior how you doing uh, i'm doing okay give me that, give me that. so uh i got a question jam go for Obama. it Obama. I bought my uh, R 485, so it was it been, it, it been at the National Benefit Center for 27 months, 28 months. It got transferred three weeks ago um, at the LFA office. Then I receive a uh, I receive a letter about a request about my medical, and I, I I don't know. They told me that I need to send a medical within a certain amount of days. So I was just going to ask you, is there, is there a good sign that yeah, dude. the kids want to yeah, be dude. You've, been waiting, you've, you've been waiting 27 months. Yeah, that's a good sign. So you think that I'm gonna, they're going to prove it without no interviews and they told me to send the medical? Yeah, I do think that. Is that the LA or is that the Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles field office? Yeah, I mean, that's just a busy, busy place. It sounds like they just want your medical so they can approve the case. Yes. Okay. All right, Jim. Thank you, man. I really, that, that's all I have. I just, I've been winning, Jim. Man, I want to start a business. It's just hard, man. Well, you're gonna call me back when you get your green card, right? Yeah, most definitely, Jim. I will. All right, all right Thank you, you sir. You got it. Yeah, you too. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Junior's on his way. Junior's on his way. How about that? Concerned citizen is here. Hello, concerned citizen. Hello. I'm calling on. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. What's up? I'm calling on behalf of my uncle. He's um, applying for citizenship, but he, he did it with a nonprofit and they didn't list some of his arrests. However, they included like the minute order and the uh, dispositions in the package. They just didn't list it. Yeah. Like on the thing. And yeah. I was wondering if that's an issue. Oh, this is for citizenship, right? Yes. Okay, so I don't know. Have you been watching the whole show today? Yes, mostly. So I was doing me, something on the side, though. That's okay. I was talking to that guy a little while ago. So there's there are little mistakes on your N four hundred and big mistakes on your N four hundred, right? A little mistake yeah. is a little mistake is I put the wrong address or I left off a job or something like that. A big one is arrest. Now the good thing is, if 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 he kept a copy of the application and he can show. Hey, I might not have told you that I got arrested for drunken disorderly, but I gave you the disposition. So at least you're on notice. Now, this is all going to get cleared up. This is all going to get cleared up at the interview. But what you don't ever want is for them to act like you lied or tried to trick them. That's that's the big thing. So so the fact that he sent that in, that's good. Um, But what I would say is at the um, 
interview, he's going to want to bring the certified court records and like be very formal with whatever it is and be, be able to talk about it. So if there's, well, in, so yeah. that's a, one of the rest. Um, the only thing we, we did, a because he lives in California, we did his background check, his yeah. DOJ. And we also sent that in. Yeah. Um, we can't get the disposition, at least a certified one, because the court record doesn't have it no more. It happened in 1989. Yeah, yeah. So, so but can, does he know what the, does, does he know what the charge was? Does he know what happened? Um, like it shows on the DOJ, it was um, a, um, arrest for under the influence, but it got dismissed because of lack of probable cause. Perfect. And then another yeah. one, another one that we didn't include it was possession of marijuana, but that one got vacated under like he wasn't told his immigration rights, and it got vacated. And then and the public defender said this should be good for you. Public, um, public defender doesn't know. Public defender's not an immigration lawyer. Well, I, I um, not to get into the semantics. Supposedly, this public defender, because I live in California. He only helps out immigrants, but I'm not sure how true that is. But the... well, here, here's what I would say about that. Did he put that shit in writing? That's the whole thing. If he put it in writing, then I'll believe him. If not, then he, he actually did. He gave me a letter. But um, he, he he said this is vacated under the he wasn't told his right. Yeah, and he was also so I was wondering, but we also included that in the package too, but we just forgot to list it. Yeah. So, and we got the certified minute order for that already, saying yeah. it got vacated. Yeah. So I was wondering what should we do in that scenario. Well, I mean, whatever you And the possession bring... of marijuana was under a gram, or it was yeah. like a gram, so. Well, I mean, I don't have the stuff in front of me to look as to whether or not that makes him deportable, but if he has a criminal defense lawyer saying he's good to go, then, yeah. then yeah. I'll, tr I'll trust him on that. Um, You know... Your job is just to bring whatever is available. If something's not available, it's impossible for you to get. Then he just needs to be able to talk about it and explain what he did to try to get it. Oh yeah, like the best thing we had on the the court record saying this is all the um all the records that exist in our systems, but that would that be sufficient enough? Probably. Okay, that that's was, that's about was it. That, was that also a long time ago? Yeah, um, it was also in 1990. Yeah, so, so he's, been, he's been a good boy since then. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, he has nothing think, on his record besides the parking ticket. Like you forgot, be, should, be, should be fine. Okay, thank you. That's about Bye, it. Bye, buddy. See ya. Bye. All right, I knew I knew there were some smart people out there. Nasir says only Montreal processes immigrant visas. I think that's true, and he says he's got a friend from Calgary who had to go to Montreal. So I think that's right. I don't know what kind of case I had in Vancouver. Might have been, I don't know what that was. Must have been a, I don't know. Some I know, I know, I know. I can picture in my mind NBC paperwork for Vancouver. Now that was a long time ago, so I don't know. But thank you, Nasir, for that. Yep, David says the same thing. Just, just Montreal for immigration. So I'll just say we got some smart people watching this show. That's all I know. Let's say hi to Chance. Hello, Chance. You're on mute. Hi, how's it going, Mister Acting? I'm great, Mr. Messick. How are you? Thanks, doing well. I uh, love all your videos. Been watching a lot lately. Um, my wife came here on a F1 student visa, and then we just got married. So we're applying for a uh, marriage-based green card, and we just had some questions about. Wait, so when did she? When did she enter? Uh, 2017. Oh wow. Okay, and you just got married though. Yeah, I got married. Uh, uh, July of last year. Okay. What's the question? Um, questions. Just some specific questions about she worked uh, under the table cast jobs like babysitter and stuff like that. Um, yeah. We're just wondering if we should, uh, how we should include that or if it, we should include it in the employment history because we figured yes. not to include an in employment history if it's not. Um, a taxable job but we didn't want to lie about it no it was it was a taxable job for which she did not pay taxes so that's True. just be yeah so she should she should list every job that she had yep okay and then since she did as multiple families like just uh 
some like family friends where she did babysitting for a long time. And then she had some uh, just sporadic, I guess, one time job. Should she list every single one she did? That seems that seems like that would be impossible. So I would probably list the big ones and then I would have another sort of catch all for other like just general, like I would just, you know, fudge it a little bit, say general babysitting for different families and then put in the dates that she did that. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then also during COVID, before we were married or anything, she yeah. it wasn't any like uh, governmental organization, but just a nonprofit helped her out with like some uh, energy bill assistance. And uh, also it was, I think it was called like Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization, helped her out with a rent payment. Yep. Um, should we, rec- is that included is that would that be considered supplemental security income nope okay do we wouldn't have to list that at all unless specifically asked yep okay great um and then this is another random question we've seen many different answers for it yes or no but the question that says are you subject to the public charge ground of inadmissibility under I and I section two one two A four is that do you answer yes or no? When if, she gets her when she gets her work card, uh, first of all, Chancellor, are you a U.S. citizen? Yeah. When she gets her work card, is she gonna go go work? Yeah, right away. Then the answer to that question is no. She's not gonna be a public charge. Okay. Um. Great. And then one more question, if that's okay. Um, I'm fine. The I one thirty A is she? We filed that congruently at the same time with my I one thirty that I'm filing on behalf of her. She needs Correct. to fill it out, and we send it in with her four eighty five and all that. Yep. Okay, for sure. We just didn't know if um, if that would be filled out after they already approve or after they look at the I-130 or if we can do it all. Remember, you're going to file the I-130, the I-130A, the I-45, the 765, the 131, the I-864, and the medical. Yep. Great. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, I think that's everything. I appreciate it. That helps a lot. And once again, thanks for all your videos and everything. You got a chance. Have a good day. Thanks, you too. All right. All right. Probably got time for one more. Let's head to Dave. What do you say, Dave? You're on mute. Hey, Jim, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I have a quick question for you. Uh, my father, he failed his uh, civics class, his civics uh, exam twice. And uh, is it possible he could he could go back and uh, get the citizenship? Oh, sure. He just has to file a new N-400. Oh, okay, okay. You, All get right, you. You, get, you get two shots on the one. So whenever you pay the filing fee and take the go to the exam, if you don't pass, you get one more chance, and then that's a final denial, and then you got to start over. Okay, I have one more question, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Uh, my son is doing an N90, uh, N400, and uh, his lawyer told him he didn't need to list one of his... Uh, he had a speeding ticket, and after he uh, he sent everything in, he told the lawyer. The lawyer said it, they, they did a search, and they didn't see anything on on his uh, his record. It doesn't matter. He should still list it, and he can update it when he goes to his interview. Oh, uh, okay. So just probably he could just get a copy of the the ticket. Mm-hmm. And the disposition that he paid it. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, Dave. Enjoy your vacation. See you, buddy. So we had three people on the show today who filed incomplete N four hundreds. Take your time, people. Take your time, or better yet, hire lawyers who make sure you file that shit right. That's what I'm talking about. I am going to enjoy my vacation. I will miss all of you. Who knows if I'll be back? But if, I mean, you know, hopefully I'll be back in two weeks. But hopefully I might do a show or two if I'm sitting in some airport or something. If you want to find out when, just text the word show. It'll probably be very last minute. Text the word SHOW to 314-470-3300. Do me one other favor. I just figured out today that we are 190 people away from 10,000 in immigrant homes. We've been having a lot of people join Immigrant Home. So there's 9,910 people in there. No, 9,810, which means we're 190 away. So we'd love to have you join us. We had 77 people join so far this week, the Immigrant Home Facebook group. So join us there. I will see you guys later, and I'll send you some pics, and uh, peace out.